Welcome to Money in the Air, the music podcast about neighboring rights, the royalties you earn from the public performance of your recordings and the business of music in general. Brought to you by IFR, the International Association for Artists and Rights Holders. I'm Andrew, co-founder and chief royalty officer of Royalty. Hi, I'm Gina Deacon. I work for Absolute Rights Management and I work with record labels and artists to ensure we claim the royalty income due to them. I'm Stacey Haber and I'm from Inside Baseball Music Publishing. Hey, welcome back to Money in the Air, the Neighboring Rights Podcast brought to you by IFR, the International Association for Artists and Rights Holders. We have a guest today. It's singer-songwriter Pip Rainbird, very big here on the Brighton scene. Mm -hmm. We're very lucky to have her. Hi, Pip. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Um, we talked about neighboring rights earlier. We didn't? did. Yeah. We did. I'm here to get educated. Do you have a lot of questions? I do. I've got some written down. Oh, actually. wow. You're really prepared. I did. I did my homework. I did my homework. <laughs> yeah, I'm letting you know. Go on. Ask away. Sure. So, um, what we've got. So, I learned about CMOs. Yeah. So, in the UK, the CMO that governs us is PPL. Correct. In America, it's Sound Exchange. That's right. Cool. So diff there's a different CMO in every country. Mm -hmm. Is that the case? Yes. Most countries. Can you think of any country, Andrew, that doesn't have one? Most of the major music markets, I mean, if not all, have a CMO collecting or they possibly have an agreement with a neighboring country. Two years ago, they got a new one in Trinidad and Tobago. Oh. I know. So it's definitely growing for anyone who doesn't have their own. Mm -hmm. um, we did three years ago, we helped with China's, didn't we? That's right. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so would you say that some CMOs are better than others? In terms of technology and ease of use in their portals and reporting and stuff like that. So there are some CMOs that are definitely further along in terms of allowing the users to manage their, their recordings on their portals and then receiving a full breadth of statements every single period. So it, it largely depends on what country. It is. Um, Sound Exchange is pretty good. PPL is really good. Uh, Santa in the Netherlands is also really good. But yeah, just it, there's a lot of variability between um, the reporting and the technology that's set up at the different CMOs. And I would say another thing to look out for is that when you get paid, if you're direct in a country, you want to make sure they tell you which recordings you're being paid for. Mm -hmm. So you know how to apportion the money correctly if you have to help if you have to pay somebody else their royalties. Okay. So there are some countries in Europe that don't give you statements. They just give you payments. Mm -hmm. And then months later, they'll send you the statements. Right. I was going to, I guess that leads on to my next question, which would be what would be the good characteristics of yeah. a good CMI yeah. versus kind of not a bad one, but a less progressed one. Yeah, that, that's a really good way to put it. So with everything in the world, transparency and data, mm -hmm. those are the important things to me. So somebody who is transparent about how they're collecting the money and who they're paying it to, mm -hmm. and who gives me the data so that I can pay the people that need to be paid, okay. that's really key for me. What about you, Andrew? It might seem obvious, but it's not always a standard that you're even going to get a recording title in the reporting with some of these statements from some of these CMOs. So any CMO that allows their members to register their works, manage their recordings on some type of a portal and receive ongoing statements that are clear as to what recording titles the earnings pertain to and hopefully where that money came from. So this one I wasn't sure about. So if a song is played in a different country to the country that it was published in, which CMO handles the, na the neighboring rights? It will always be collected locally in that country. Okay. And then that CMO will send it to the CMO who had done the okay. registration. Okay, but you're not publishing registration. Yeah. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, what about if it's a country, it's the Rome Convention, the 1961 Rome, I did my research. Yeah, you did. did you did your work. research. I'm very, I'm very proud of you. Because you've covered <laughs> so many of the bases. <laughs> I went home, I looked up. So what about if it's a country not in the Rome Convention, so for example, America? So if an American artist has their material played elsewhere? If a country is not a signatory of the Rome Convention, then they're not eligible to receive specifically terrestrial broadcast neighboring okay. rights. That covers radio, non-interactive digital performance. That's that's what we're calling it. So Pandora, mm -hmm. SiriusXM, 
nothing off of AMFM uh, radio is going to be paid out here for sound recordings. And so what happens is there's a lack of reciprocity between UK and the US in terms of collections from traditional radio. US citizens are not going to receive traditional broadcast income from the UK. But there is good news. They collect more money than the rest of the world combined. Wow. Yeah, so that's important to note. Mm -hmm. And also, if you have a neighboring rights representative, especially one outside of the US, then they will pass through the money that they collect on oh, your behalf. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And then there are places like Australia, which is not a signatory, and they will only pay Australian artists. Oh. I know. Interesting. Yeah. So again, you have a local collection society in Australia mm. to register on your behalf. Yeah. So you have local presence. Cool. Okay. Um, something you mentioned as well was interactive street, like streaming versus non-interactive. Mm. So I guess in interactive streaming is something like Spotify, isn't it? Where, for example, you can skip a song. So that makes That's it right. non-eligible for neighboring rights. Is that the case? Two things in terms of initiatives and lobbying and changes to policies. The first of which is the first one that you touched on, which is the full recognition of AM, FM, terrestrial broadcast um, income. And then the second of which is for interactive streaming. So if something is interactive, that means that it's more of a reproduction, which means that it's not eligible for performance doesn't make any sense because on the composition side, actually it is. So whenever you stream a song on Spotify, there are two types of royalties that are getting remitted. The mechanical royalties for the reproduction and then the public performance because Spotify is drawing a crowd. The same should be the case on the sound recordings, but it's not. So those are really the two things that hopefully will change in the near future. Most countries are not paying on interactive streaming for neighboring rights. Now, there are some countries that do, like Spain. And Hungary. And the EU directive did say that every EU country had to legislate it mm -hmm. by last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. And they haven't. Only Hungary and Spain have. Right. So it will come. Mm -hmm. It's just not here yet. Okay. Is there a particular reason why Spain and Hungary did, or is that just who knows? <laughs> just better just and more efficient. Like yeah. True, true, true. Wanting to be on the right side of the tracks. The two issues are interrelated. The history of these is that because sound artists and labels are not getting paid off of AM, FM radio broadcaster in the United States, the labels are able to charge a lot for the streaming income for the reproduction. And so the services are saying we can't further pay out a performance royalty on the sound recordings because the labels are taking so much. And then the labels are saying, well, we're not getting anything off of AM, FM broadcast, but the songwriters and publishers are. So until all this stuff is fixed, it's so they're kind of interrelated, but um, two kind of separate issues. And, and Spotify are threatening to pull out of Hungary. Oh, really? Yeah, because they can't afford to pay it oh. um, because they're paying so much to the labels and the labels won't give them any leeway. Interesting. Yeah, so the labels will stop getting that income. Mm -hmm. They'll have done themselves out of that royalty. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, in light of UMG and... TikTok, mm -hmm. with yeah, yeah, oh, yeah crazy. it's the same argument. They're not getting paid enough, so they're not going to have the music. Mm -hmm. Now it's the reverse, where they're not going to have the platform mm -hmm. because they're taking too much money. Swings and roundabouts. Interesting. Mm. So is it just specifically Hungary that threatening mm -hmm. spots, so not Spain? No. Why is it? Because Spain makes more, has more artists, I guess. I I don't know. Okay, that's interesting. So like kind of going back to the Rome Convention Treaty, because I thought that was interesting. Was there a compulsion or pressure for America or Australia to sign it? There was, and they attended the conference, mm -hmm. but America can't sign it still to this day mm -hmm. because of the way the copyright law um, came about in the US. Mm -hmm. There was an exemption for recordings, especially pre-1972 recordings. Okay. So they could not promise to pay royalties on it because the copyright law doesn't make them. Right. So no TV station, no radio station is going to agree to change that. Okay, got you. That makes sense. Anything to add for that? No, it's just yeah. the TV, radio stations. Why would 
why would they pay more money if they didn't have to? It's right. really messed up, but it, that's really what it comes down to. And they they claim it's they're already at thin margins, they're already paying out a lot, but it's it's not right. Mm. Yeah, but but you're asking somebody um, who will have no benefit mm -hmm. in national treatment to give up part of their income, which is obviously a no. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Got, got you. Exactly. Cool. I think that was all my questions. Really. They were great thank questions. You. No, thank you. Uh, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Remember, if you're not already a member of IFR, go to www.iafar.co.uk and join now. We need your support and we'll answer your questions without you having to come on the podcast.